So Bungie's recent TWAB gave expectations leading into next season. One of those things was Quick Draw. You may have seen the screenshot in a lot of other videos, but to summarize it, they hit it in two different ways. Mechanically, meaning the way it works, and straight up removal of it from the Felwinter's Lie and Astral Horizon aggressive shotguns. Funny enough, not from our sweet prince though. Today's video is going to teach you how I think Quick Draw will feel post nerf, and then if you stick around to the end, I will teach you exactly how to make a gun feel like it has Quick Draw using specific perks and some handling stat targets to chase. If I use my time machine and go back to when the TWAB first dropped, Twitter went nuts saying Quick Draw is dead. Rip aggressive. We often jump to conclusions and I'm at fault for this too. I even sent a little self plug tweet saying, wow, what a quinky dink. I happened to make a quick draw replacement video with 50 tests a week prior because my dad owns Bungie. In my tweet, I said, I believe having quick draw on your primary will matter very much now to help combat Bellwinters not having it. Comments started flying in and I was smiling ear to ear that I had a video catching fire, but I'll always fess up when I think I'm in the wrong. After putting a lot of thought and ridiculous amount of testing, I've come to some new conclusions on why my table in that video might not be so great to use anymore, so buckle up. To start, you really need to understand how perks impact swapping weapons, so let me remind you what Quick Draw does as of today. A gun has three mechanics, the ready speed, ADS speed, which is looking down sights, and the stow speed. These three animations are affected by two things, the handling stat and animation buffs. Higher handling on a weapon means all three sections are faster. But what about that term animation buff? There are mods out there that don't necessarily add a handling stat to the weapon, but instead they actually adjust the animation time. This will make a lot more sense soon. Quick draw was not an animation buff per se. It just gave your weapon 100 handling. For example, here's a fighting line with 100 handling and no quick draw versus a militia's with 68 handling, but it does have quick draw. They have identical down to the frame speeds for all three sections. Another fun fact is that different archetypes within the same gun category follow the same handling code, so a 55 handling precision shotgun would be the exact same speed for these three scenarios versus a 55 handling aggressive shotgun. Back to the reason this matters though. Our baseline for a quick draw Felwinters, for example, is 12 frames for all three sections. It's a coincidence that all three of these are 12 frames, so don't take that from this, but do remember the 12 frames because we're going to come back to this. To really demonstrate the change that Bungie is making to quick draw, let's show you the full cycle of swapping between two weapons. First, you have your primary out, then you stow it away, you ready your special weapon, ADS, and if you wanted to swap back, you would stow that special weapon, ready your primary, five sections total. My old video showed the power of having quick draw on both weapons. It was absolutely insanely fast because all five of these sections were going at Mach 10. Sorry, I mean ludicrous speed. Ludicrous speed. <gasps> ludicrous speed. Things like this were possible. Three peeking again. Here's how I think quick draw will work in the future using this same scenario. I have some assumptions baked in, of course, but I can confirm that later on if need be. Let's say you had quick draw on a sniper, but not your primary. Beforehand, you might be watching the lane, zooming in and out when you wanted with fast ADS speed because of quick draw. You saw someone, you bodied them, and then you would stow your sniper away very quickly because of quick draw, section four. Then maybe you had a 40 handling hand cannon, so it was a little bit of a slower ready speed, but that's okay because the sniper got put away really fast. You'd finish them off with your primary and you were happy. This was originally called blinting and eventually people would coin it as encooching somebody. Another example is like that clip I showed you earlier of Ill Physics, where he had quick draw on both weapons. Say you have your hand cannon out for a while, you hit someone with it, you stow it away super fast, ready your shotgun super fast, ADS and hit them. They don't quite die, so you stow it away really quickly again, then you ready your hand cannon really quickly again because of quick draw, and you end up with a really nice play to clutch around in trials. All of this was thanks to those five sections being covered by quick draw. Here's how I believe these will react with the changes to the perk. Example one, you have your sniper out weary of that one lane. After one second of having that weapon on screen, it loses all quick draw effects. In other words, it goes down from 100 handling to whatever that weapon stat might be. Looking at the Frozen Orbit, for example, this one has like 40 some handling, which isn't great at all. That's a huge difference. So now you're ADSing way slower than ever. Let's say you body someone anyways, then you go to stow it away and end cooch them, but it feels like molasses and takes forever. You pull out your primary and it feels like you're using cinder blocks because you've got back to back slow stow and ready speed. Now, why did I say the one second thing? I believe that Bungie is saying that Quick Draw will always give you a fast ready speed, but then only for one second are you going to get those other benefits. They also say that ADSing the weapon will trigger the debuff. 
What I'm not sure of is that first ADS when you swap to it, will it be quick or will it not? I guess time will tell. And then you know for sure after one second, the stowaway speed is going to be super slow. In actuality, I think snipers got the real hit here because people don't realize how much quick draw is helping them ADS that scope all the way in. It's going to feel way slower in my opinion because ADS targeting mods don't even hold a candle to how much quick draw is helping you scope that weapon in. Another funny thing is that if you have the perk on both weapons though, you could technically cycle through them forever and keep that one second window refreshing constantly. But first of all, that's not very practical regardless. And there's a bug in the game where it actually won't shoot your weapon if you've cycled back and forth between two guns too many times. Thanks to Glow for pointing that one out on Twitter. Now for these reasons, Quick Draw is definitely going to be worse, but it will still be very strong. And I think that's why Bungie went to that number two I mentioned, which was removing the Quick Draw perk altogether from the Felwinter's Lie and Astral Horizon. They're replacing it with a perk called Surplus, which is both awesome and frustrating, but I'm going to dive into that one and Threat Detector a little bit later in this video. First, I want to mention two things, though. If you ever want to chat further or chime in on things like this with me, Twitter is a really good place. I typically post a lot of my info or ideas there, and then Discord is another great place to chat with me. We've grown to nearly 2,500 members, and I'd love to see you there. Links are down below if you're interested. Number two is the fact that earlier in the intro, I said I needed to fess up about my older quick draw video from about a week ago. A lot of those comments came in saying this was perfect timing, but I also just told you that I think some of those tables are wrong now, so let me tell you why. What I basically tried to do in that video was say, okay, swapping from a 40-ish handling 120 hand cannon to a quick draw Felwinters feels fine. So what is that total swap speed? Well, it was 0.58 seconds or 35 frames total. I figured if I take quick draw off and if I can match this timing, then all is well. We should be fine without it. One of those examples was where I said if you have quick draw on your primary it'll stow so fast that it'll make up the slow timing of the ready speed on your shotgun and works out to 0.58 seconds anyways. The problem though is it just didn't feel good. It still felt like I was hauling this cinder block around and the reason was because the ADS speed was so slow and because the visual animation of pulling out that shotgun is super staggering to you while you're playing. You're able to shoot earlier than you can even see the gun sometimes so it just doesn't feel good. A few people called me out on that and I actually respect you for the constructive criticism. This time around my approach was not so much the swap from weapon A to weapon B, but more so how do I get my damn shotgun to just feel like it has quick drop period. And that's exactly what I figured out. Back to that original screen where I said a quick drop Felwinters has 12 frames for the ready, ADS and stow. That is the ultimate goal, all three scenarios. So how do we truly get there? Well, there are three ways in my opinion. Number one, you could say F it, vault it and use a different weapon. I'll cover that, but it doesn't seem quite as helpful. So let's cover number two. There are stat modifiers in the game for handling. A gun has a cap of 100 handling, but there's a bunch of different ways to get there by adding different things, perks, mods, whatever it is. Surplus is an example I'm showing you today. Number three are those animation buffs I told you about. I'll call them percentage boosters. These are things that work relative to your handling stat and have no cap. Threat detector falls under this category, which is also going to be covered in this video. Dexterity mods are a perfect example of number three. Using a 35 handling shotgun, it has a ready speed of 27 frames. Gross, nowhere near the 12 frames that we want. If I toss a shotgun dexterity mod on, it shortens that 27 frames by 20%. It's always reducing the animation time by 20%. That brings it to 22 frames. Not quite the 12, of course, but we'll get there. Now, because I've done so many different handling tests across so many different shotguns, I actually know that this is identical to my 60 handling shotgun ready speed of 22 frames as well. So in this case, the dexterity mod acted like a 25 handling stat boost. Scenario two, using a 73 handling shotgun, my ready speed is 19 frames. This makes sense. It's a lot faster than the 27 frames earlier because 73 handling is way higher than 35. If I toss a dexterity mod here, it'll shorten that 19 frames by the same 20%, bringing it to a total of 15 frames. Not quite 12, but getting there. Right around 85 to 90 handling on a shotgun with no mods or anything, just that one stat, it'll have that same 15 frames, meaning here the dexterity mod added around 17 handling, not the 25 from scenario one. This is all demonstrative, demonstrative, demonstrative? How do you say that stupid word? Anyways, the gist of it is that handling percentage boosters work relative to the handling stat. 
it's a little bit backwards because their percentage cuts the time of the animation, meaning these mods work more for you on low handling guns and less for you on high handling guns, but still good nonetheless. The cool part about being able to combine number two, which is just straight base stat modifiers, and then number three, which are these percentage boosters, is that I can actually use math and figure out exactly how to emulate quick draw and then test it in game to make sure it does feel the same. Back to that objective, we want 12 frames for all three sections. If you can get your weapon to around 80 or 90 handling, you'll be around 15 frames for these sections, meaning when you put your dexterity mod and an ADS mod, which shortens it by 17% by the way, you'll end up right around that 12 frame mark. That's the goal in my opinion, 80 to 90 handling. If I were you, my first statement would be, well, you're stupid. My Felwinters has 33 handling, or my Astral has 35 handling. How am I ever going to get there? And that's where this next part comes in. First up is Surplus. It reads increased handling, reload speed, and stability for each fully charged ability. After some grueling testing using a ridiculous amount of different shotguns and the help of my buddies Ivan and Kutsu, we were able to confirm the following. When all abilities are gone, zero buff. When one of them is charged, it will add plus 10 handling to that weapon with the perk on it. When two of them are charged, it adds 25 handling stat. If all three are charged, it's adding 50 handling to your weapon. We also thought, well, what if you had double of one charge, like double nades or double dodge, for example? The cool news is that those count too. This thing caps at three, meaning if you have all three charged and one of them is double charged, it won't act like you have four and you get even faster than 50 handling boost. But what it does mean is that let's say you're a hunter with two shurikens charged and you don't have your dodge or your grenade, while having one charge doubled is exactly the same boost as having two single charges. Heck, you could toss on like six coyote and then as long as you always have three out of those five potential charges, you're pretty much doing great. For my crayon eaters out there, maybe Heart of Inmost Light just got a little bit better because that'll help you have those charges all the time. Either way, I'm just bringing you the info. So let's go back to that astral for a moment. Say you land a 35 handling drop and you never really have all three charged, but maybe you typically have two. Well, now you're at 35 plus 25 for a total of 60 handling already. Another perk that they're changing in the new season is Celerity. It's now going to give a passive 20 handling buff at all times. Now you're at 80 handling on an Astral. We also tested the crap out of Quick Charge, that seasonal mod. It gives you around 10 handling. It's definitely not zero when you compare it frame by frame. It is helping you, but it's nothing to write home about. Either way, in this scenario, if you were to have that on as well, you'd now have an Astral with 90 total handling. Add your dexterity and your targeting mods, and bam, you have quick draw level speeds for all three sections. For those wondering about Felwinters, well, an example is a lucky warlock who can wear Ophidians. Those add a flat 30 to 35 handling, meaning two stacks of surplus and a dex mod, and it'll feel fine. This isn't to say surplus is great. I think I'm going to have a love-hate relationship with it because I really don't like the idea of my swap speed not being consistent, especially being relative to ability usage in the game that is Destiny. But hey, I'm just here to show you the info. I feel like my god roll astral would be accurized rounds, surplus, and then opening shot or celerity. And then for the barrel and masterwork, whatever gets me closest to that 80 plus handling. The real confusing part is that I feel like Bungie knew they were going to remove quick draw from these things, which is why the new astral doesn't even land it. But then they also took off threat detector. So we ended up using the toil and trouble to do a lot of testing on that one. It's just like surplus where multiple aspects of the gun get buffed. But in this case, instead of needing charged abilities, you just need enemies within 15 meters of you and it stacks twice. These buffs are not flat handling additions like surplus, they're actually percentage boosters, meaning it helps low handling even more, and it's a ton. At one stack, it'll shorten that swap animation by 25%, and then at two stacks, it's another 25% on top of that, meaning a roughly 45% total from the base. What this means is if you could get around 70 plus handling and one dexterity and targeting mod, it'll match quick draw when you have one enemy within 15 meters of you. With two stacks active, you can literally make a 35 to 40 handling shotgun feel like it has quick draw, but I don't really bank on that because you need two enemies around you. Either way, it's pretty strong on paper and the Toil and Trouble rolls it alongside Snapshot too. Now, what about that number one though? I said number two was handling stat, number three was animation buffs, but number one was just saying F it and using a different gun. Especially because quick draw is still gonna be pretty strong and landing on other shotguns. 
There are definitely other options out there and a lot of people are kind of wondering about the retold tail. I will mention that about a year ago, I did over 500 tests at 6 meters, 7 meters, 8 meters and whatnot, both hip fire and ADS on a ton of different shotguns. The video might be a little cringy because I was fairly new to YouTube, but nonetheless, I have the tests done. The unfortunate news is that that was back when they changed how the shotgun cones worked in Destiny. Precision frame shotguns got decimated. I couldn't believe they did it because they actually made the gap between precisions and aggressives get way larger. The lightweights had even worse one hit kill potential. They're weird though. Their pellet spreads are unbelievably tight. Like imagine shot package times 10, but they deal so little damage that you almost never have a one hit kill potential unless you're inside of six meters for sure. I'd really have to spend a good amount of time in Crucible with both of those archetypes for me to give an informed decision on one versus the other. Walla's recent video shows a lot of the shortcomings of Retold Tail if you watch how many times he doesn't kill someone but thought he should have. However, on the flip side, he still feels it's pretty strong and I think that's because he's really good at the game. What this tells me is that as you improve, you can pretty much make anything work and precision frames will definitely fall under that category. I think the last thing to mention here is that there's a lot more that fall under that number two and number three category that can help you with handling and animation speed. Pulse monitor, for example. I don't like it because you have to be critical health, so I didn't cover it. Quick access sling. Hit fire grip there's all these things out there so what i'll do instead is quite literally the most useful sheet ever for this particular topic actually on the whole game it's unbelievable i can't believe i didn't know about this until very recently and seriously you should bookmark this thing i think we're gonna see a lot more ophidian aspects way more dragon's shadow but you know what f it i'm rocking lucky pants with double primary what happened where are they i don't know sir hopefully you found this informative thank you for watching and cheers